Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz saxophonist and composer Anthony E. Nelson Jr. He opened up about his new 2023 CD, Swinging Sunset, that serves as an homage to the great jazz organ trios that were particularly popular in clubs in the 50s and 60s. This is his fifth CD as a leader. He first picked up the alto saxophone at the age of 11 and just kept on going. He gets into new music, the future, the past, and so much more. Enjoy. It's great to meet you. Thanks for taking a minute out. Thank you, Joe. I really appreciate you. Absolutely. Even thinking so, of me. Yeah, yeah, you bet, man. Before we get into your latest album, Swinging Sunset, I want to know how, as a musician, how did you survive COVID? How did you get that through that time period now that the world's waking up? And how has it changed the way that you approach things now? I thought I was appreciative of what I'm blessed to do as a musician, as an artist, as a creator. I thought I was, but what COVID and the pandemic showed me was that I had to take it to another level of appreciation because not only is not every breath promised to us, but uh, the opportunity to present music and your artistry, your gifts, those aren't guaranteed. Uh, The opportunity to gain ears and potential listeners and to interact with individuals, that's not guaranteed. And no one has to give you their ear. And so it's, to say the least, it's been very humbling. It made me even more appreciative of the opportunity to present music to the masses. Hey, it made me more appreciative to present the music to, to an audience of one or two, sometimes just sitting in my room and having an opportunity to pick up my instrument has a new, uh, a newfound appreciation. There's, it was very easy to make me feel as though I took things for granted. That's uh, and as far as going through the pandemic, well, as a father of six children, it got pretty uh, interesting. Because I have six beautiful children and my wife and I uh, worked hard to keep things afloat. And so, yes, it was, I had work, uh, I even worked a a freight job, more than one freight job, because after a while, all the subsidies ran out. But I have six children to take care of. But the whole time I was at those jobs, I was thinking about music. I was thinking about what my artistry would be when I got to come back to being a full-time musician and music educator. And so all in all, the sense of appreciation, respect for the gift and the, the onus of having to cherish this gift and value every ear heart and mind entrusted to me that's the biggest takeaway from covid for me not even just making a living musically but but being appreciative of every ear heart and mind entrusted to me even in passing so what does this new album swinging sunset mean now the world's waking up we're coming into a new place live music what does this album mean this album is, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, it's, it's a culmination of my upbringing. I grew up in the church, it, uh, which the main backdrop of every song when I was growing up was the Hammond B3 Oregon. First clubs I went to were places like the Peppermint Lounge and St. Nick's Pub and, uh, and places such as uh, um, La Famille's in Harlem. They all had organs, and that was the foundation. So for me, this album, for the world, I would hope, is uh, a reminder of things just need to feel good sometimes. It doesn't need to be super deep. It just needs to feel good, and there's nothing deeper than making music that feels good. And so this album is really um, a culmination of 
how I was raised. The music had to feel good first and foremost. Nothing pretentious, I hope, but just simply feeling good. And as I mentioned in the liner notes, um, it makes reference to some of those tenor players and saxophones and musicians as a whole. That once again, as I mentioned about coming through this pandemic, it put a focus on engaging with the listeners, being one with them, offering them something. And hopefully, even if you don't know what they're going through, you're sending them away with something that they're going to remember. So Swinging Sunset is me saying thank you. Because some of those people that I mentioned, like Tommy Grice, uh, he's no longer with us. Bootsy Barnes is no longer with us. But they were they were pivotal in me becoming who I am because I watched them do it right. Play with all the sophistication in the world, but never once did they ever forget the audience. Same thing with the great the great Bill Saxton and, of course, James Carter and Bruce Wayne and, and Mark Gross, all those people I mentioned – they kept the audience engaged while giving them a high level of musicianship. And so this is my love letter to uh, those that are with us, those that are no longer with us. And ultimately, let's be grateful and let's swing into the sunset. So what are you ultimately hoping the listener gets from this album? Well, to be quite honest with you, I'm truly just hoping that they feel good. Nothing deeper than that. I, I really hope that no matter what's happening during their day, no matter what's happening during their morning, no matter what's happening during their evening, when they put this album on or if they select the track, there's something there for them that's going to put their mind at ease, put a groove in their heart, put a tap in their foot. As Cecil Brooks, the word, excuse me, Cecil Brooks, the third one said, it needs to be that neck pecking jammy, that thing that makes your neck just, just bounce because it's, it's grooving so hard. I am sincerely hoping that the listeners go away feeling elevated and when necessary I guess the proper term would be satiated uh, that they would be put at ease in the proper times where the album needs to put you at ease I hope that there's something there for everyone so how did this journey begin for you in the jazz how did it all begin who were some early influences well um I would be remiss if I did not mention Glenwood Collins. He was a drummer. Um, he's the man that gave me my very first saxophone. I wanted to play the saxophone in elementary, at Jefferson Elementary School in Plainfield, New Jersey. And Mr. Collins, who's no longer with us, uh, said, come on, Anthony, I'm going to give you a saxophone. He gave me a saxophone. and He was a uh, by that time, he had already, he was one of the cats on the scene. So, you know, he had worked with numerous great musicians. He worked with James Spaulding and other people around the world, you know. And he was uh, the first person to put a saxophone in my hand. And then I went to, and I was just in, into the music because it was the natural trajectory for me growing up around playing. But I'm hearing this music. I, I came from the church, so, but there was a, 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 how do I say this? Even then, there was, we, under, I was raised understanding naturally, kind of organically, the, the, um, how do I want to say it? The connection between jazz and gospel and the blues. And so one was a naturally lean to the other because in my house, we were listening to everything. I mean, Parliament Funkadelics, because I am from Plainfield, New Jersey, and that's where that group is from. 
we were listening to everything. So for me to become a jazz musician, when I have all of my family listening to a wide, a wide variety of music was quite easy because I was exposed to everything. And jazz is what permeated in my heart. Uh, excuse me, was what permeated the walls of my heart, that in gospel. And so that was uh, truly, it's all based on my, up, excuse me, it's all based on my upbringing and those blessings of uh, being around a bunch of great musicians, be at the church and then going to places like the Summer Arts Institute where I got to meet great musicians like uh, trumpeter and arranger Tony Branker who gave me a wealth of information uh, and he's, I don't mention him often enough. And then Leslie Ford in the uh, Jazz Institute in New Jersey and Rodham Swartz. So it was a, it seemed like it was a snowball effect for me to go deeper and deeper in the jazz. Oh, and I would be remiss to not mention if I didn't mention that I actually started off singing classical music. Um, we had a boys choir in Plainfield called Cantoris. It was the music, uh, excuse me, the choir master was David E. Lamb. And so I would bring in these compositions that I would, I heard Duke Ellington play and he would play for me. He said, man, I don't, he said, the way that he did this is interesting, but the way he put these sounds together. And so from classical to jazz to r and I was very blessed to have a wide variety of influences, but they all led me back to jazz because in jazz, I saw that as being, I wanted to create, I wanted to express. I was kind of verbose. <laughs> so I, I was, that was the one idiom that allowed me to express improvisationally. So what has been the ultimate motivation for you all these years? What is it that you like the best about being a professional musician? That's a tough question. Uh, on one hand, I will say that it's the fellowship with the musicians. And because I come from a different walk of life than many of the musicians that I encounter, well, certainly they do and no one's path is exactly the same and so I've been very blessed to be on the stage with musicians I like personally and musicians I don't like personally but they're great musicians and they have a contribution that is not to be taken for granted because if I take their contribution for granted I'm giving them permission to take my contribution for granted um, and then there's the connection with the audience, not the oohs and the ahs, not the not the uh, adulation. It's feeling as though I made a difference. There's a couple, or there might be a person sitting by themselves, and something that I play or that I present that night might be just the thing that their heart needed. It might just be the thing that their life needed. My one of my mentors, his name is slipping my, my mind right now. But they said, "Uh, you're not presenting." Oh, excuse me. It was Brad Lee. He said, "People died to play this music, and so we have to give this music to give other people life." And in other words, respect where this music came from and what its purpose is. It wasn't about us being overly glorified and about us. It was about the people. All art is about giving to the people, connecting with the people. So as far as being a professional musician, having that opportunity means more giving to the people. Because at the end of the day, I don't, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I am meant to be a servant. And if you're a musician or actor, actress, and you're not, you don't view yourself as a servant, then you might be missing something because then your, your presentation might be about you and not the people that you're trying to reach. 
that's what I love most about being a musician is connecting with the musicians, my other fellow musicians, professional musicians, and being a servant. And giving the people what they need, hopefully at that time, at that moment, on that day, in that instance. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, fans, but ultimately you're in control. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Wow. I'm a man that is searching, trying to be the best father that I can be, the best husband that I can be, and to be quite honest with you, the best minister that I can be because my job is to reach people. And I am very much so highly identified, self-identified as a Christian jazz musician, meaning that I'm a Christian and I do believe in God and Jesus Christ. And in all of that, just the idiom that I choose to praise is music, is jazz music. That is my, that is my, if music was speaking in tongues, jazz would be the, my method of speaking in tongues, if you know what that term means. And Absolutely. so, yes. So that that's really where I'm coming from. That's really how I view myself. And that's how I assess myself, not according to how many people love what I'm playing or what I'm thinking, but is the integrity behind what I'm doing correct? Because I could have a whole, a wide variety of people who love what I do and be totally hollow and self-serving inside. And if that's the case, who have I glorified other than myself? Like I'm a servant. So that's what how I view myself. And I have a responsibility to all those that are that are that are around me. I, I'm responsible to a person that doesn't even know I exist right now because something that I present might be what changes their heart and mind. I might be the one God might use the notes that I play to steer somebody in the in a better direction than what they were headed. And so I view myself as a servant, as a joyful servant. And my goal is always to be a cheerful giver. And if I feel like I'm not being a cheerful giver, I resign or I walk away from the situation. So Anthony, if anyone wants to get Swinging Sunset, learn more about you, live gigs, anything pertaining to your world, where can they go? They can most certainly go to Anthony Nelson jazz.com. You could even check out my Instagram, which is Anthony E. Nelson Jr. Uh, at Instagram. Um, and of course, I'm the easiest person on Facebook to find because I always use my full name, Anthony E. Nelson Jr. And in any of those places, you will find out what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, and normally who I'm doing it with. So that's, uh, and if you want access to Swinging Sunset, feel free to go to iTunes or wherever you prefer to get your uh, digital media. Excellent. Yes. Perfect. Anthony, this has been great. Thank you for opening up. Thanks for your story. Best of luck with the album and as the world opens up a little bit more. Joe, I truly appreciate you because you did not have to take time out to speak to this humble saxophonist. I am truly blessed by you this morning. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and minds in New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Anthony for his time, energy, and story. If you want to hear more Neon Jazz interviews, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to us at YouTube, and for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends.
Neon Jazz.